Hello and welcome back to my collection. We've moved down to shelf number three, starting on the left hand side, and we're getting into my Peter Stone horses. So first up we have, and I have no idea how to pronounce his name, Injimai, Ingimai. He is on the standing drafter. He's a special run from 2005. He's not listed as a Nan special run, but that's where I got him. I was judging at Nan that year. They made 30 of them and we at Nan got first pick. So um, I'm pretty sure they all sold out there. They did a really nice job with the uh, Appaloosa. Stone's always done a stunning job. I mean, just the hoof rings and the stripes and all of the details. Um, but this was, I think, one of the first where they started doing the mane and tail customization. So it was kind of the beginning of their customizing of their different molds. And so he was very popular. I don't think, oh, he is numbered. He is numbered 12 of 30. So um, I remember I was kind of in the middle of the pack for picking. So he was probably just kind of an average example, but even an average example of a stone horse is still wonderful. Next we have the first Artisan's Hall horse. This is also the standing drafter. He does not have a name. He was by Sarah McKevich in 1997. They, they, th they made, I think, 112 of them and demand went so absolutely insanely crazy that they made another 88 for 200 in total. So mine is um, initialed by Sarah. Then he has the number two because he's in the second run. He's six of 88 of the second run of these horses. And you can see why they, they actually brought the artists to the Peter Stone factory to paint these horses by hand, each and every one. So Sarah actually painted all of these crazy dapples on all of these horses. He is absolutely beautiful. He's one of my favorite in my collection. And you can see why he was so popular in the Artisans Hall here series was amazingly popular. You signed up and you got a number and that was your number. And if you didn't buy the next horse in the series, then they'd go on to the wait list. But I know the wait list was very, very long because they were very, very popular. I was happy to be even in the second batch of Artisan Hall. So this is the third Artisan Hall horse. This is Raw. Um, he was made by Ed. Oh my gosh, it's been so long. I can't remember his last name. Um, it is a really pretty pinto uh, chestnut on the Arab mold. And again, so now, now he is numbered 118 out of 200. Um, so again, this is the third of the Artisan's Hall horses. And then we have Opal. He is um, a trunk show horse. They made them for six months from January to June 2001. And they had a, just this amazing variety of colors dark blues, hot pinks, pale whites. Um, I picked him at when Stone was doing his Equilocity or whatever he was calling it back then over at, I think it was at Fasig Tipton that year. And so I got to hand pick the one that I liked. I like the really pale because I think it turns, shows off the metallic of him a lot. And he has a detailed blue eye with eye whites. Just beautiful. I would I would totally buy like every single one of these horses because he's so pretty. Um, then we have Goodman. He is a Midwest um, horse fair, Midwest horse fair special run from 2013. I am a collector of variety, so I wanted an example of each mold. So you can kind of see I don't have a lot or I don't have as many of any individual molds as I do of some of the briars. So he came up for a good price and I needed the mold. And so that's why he's in my collection, not for any particular reason. He's kind of a placeholder till I find something I like better. Then we have Mistletoe Kisses. This is the Tennessee Walking Horse mold in a really gorgeous metallic dappled chestnut pinto with nice mapping. Um, he was a, I think he was a special run in 2004. They even did the little hoof um, nail details for his shoes. His upright foot has his shoe painted on. 
Um, I love the color. I love the met high metallics. He's kind of a semi-gloss and I like the big bald faces. So that's how he ended up in my collection. Then comes an interesting one. This is the Thoroughbred Mold. This is one of my few customs. I cannot remember the artist's name. I bought him at Jamboree from a room sale one year and I thought he was absolutely stunning. I think he looks like a Milliflory paperweight. So I named him Milliflory and showed him pretty successfully. Um, the artist did absolute tons of details with this amazing Appaloosa paint job on him and kind of the roaning and um, so he jumped out at me and he's one of my very few customs and I think he's probably my only Peter Stone custom. Mm -hmm. True custom where you buy him from the artist. Um, next we have a designer horse on the Palouse mold. I got addicted to these design, darn designer horses. I mean there's no way you could get from the factory your own custom horse. Uh, I don't think they're tremendously expensive for what you're getting. You're basically getting a one-of-a-kind horse in exactly what you want. So I fell in love with this color. As you can see, I love the metallics. I love the pintos. You can pay a little extra and you can get a unicorn horn on him. He has little gold hooves. Um, so I just love him. So he's a designer horse from 2014. I have several designer horses because I think it's an absolutely awesome concept that you can order exactly what you want from the factory. It's considered an original finish. It's not a custom. It's an original finish, one of a kind from the factory. Although somebody else could order exactly the same thing. Um, still, it's really a cool idea. Um, so next we have, I think this guy's name is Larry. Um, I think he was, he's on the foundation quarter horse mold. I think he's a special run from 2012. Um, nice, basic, uh, he's attractive. Again, I kind of want one of every mold and he was a good price. And so he sits here until I find something that talks to me a little more. Then we get to a little bit of hobby history. This is Sparky Nova, one of the very first uh, Peter Stone horses and one of the very first special runs Peter Stone horse. It's the Western Pleasure horse. He was a 1997 special run for Equilocity, and at the time, um, he was pretty popular. He is a nice performance mold um, in just a nice, easy to tack position where you can use him in a variety of things. And so um, I bought him at Briarfest. Um, I can't remember. I think I, I think I bought him. I don't remember if I bought him from Peter Stone or from the, I think I bought him at the Artisans Showcase, if I remember correctly. But he's one of the first, and I need an example of that mold, so he sticks around. And then we have um, this guy. This is, this is an Artisans Hall horse from the year 2000. This is on, um, I think this is called the performance horse mold. Again, another really performance friendly. Um, the mane comes down so that you can put a saddle on him and there's not a lot of mane up here so you can bridle him up really easy. Um, really nice, very attractive um, dappled Palomino. He is by, and I'm sorry, I don't know how you exactly the, pronounce the name, Deary Joan Frank from 1999. Um, I did buy him when I was still on the list, so he is number 118 of 200 because that was my number and did a really nice job. Um, he was very popular for a while. He's been superseded by more accurate and attractive molds, but that's okay. He's still cool. Um, then another design a horse. This is on the pony. I mean, geez, you can... I would have waited 20 million years for them to come up with a green pinto pony with a bald face and a, you know, gold horn. So um, I thought when I was putting them together, I go, this is what I like. You can order exactly what you want. And I think that's very cool. Then this one I wanted for years and years and years. I missed out on him when he was first released. This is the pony mold again. This is in... Um, 
the braided mane and loose tail version. This is poinsettia from 2001. He's a special run. There was 500 made. I thought it was a really, really cool idea and very well executed how he's the white dappled with the gold mane and tail, and then the poinsettias hand painted on there. Um, just really, really a great idea and a nice execution. Finally found him at Briarfest a couple of years ago for a good price, so I snatched him up. Um, and then in the back, I'm not gonna be able to get him down, but that is, I consider it a piece of hobby history. He is trouble. He is the very, very first Peter Stone horse ever made, and he is actually one of the very first Peter Stone horses ever made. He was from 1996 from the Peter Stone breakfast when he was announcing the launch of his new company. They made just enough for those of us who attended the breakfast. And if I remember the story correctly, um, they were actually hand putting the mold together like two days before the breakfast and then spraying them with the gold the day before the breakfast. He's a Chris Hess um, sculpted mold. And in that bronze, he's clear underneath. Actually, I think the plastic's kind of maybe gold tinted. Um, they did make a regular run trouble that's made out of the regular plastic with the bronze color over the top and he looks completely different from the actual breakfast horses. So that guy is an actual Peter Stone, sculpted by Chris Hess, Breakfast Trouble, one of the very, very first horses that the Peter Stone Company ever made. And then we'll just come down here. This is my favorite mold, so here we go again. I don't collect all of the same mold, but I have a bunch of them. Um, this is the Pebbles Arabian Mare. This is again one of those designer horses, so I could pick the number of socks, I pick the face marking, I picked it on the swish tail with no mane over here in just a really nice liver chestnut. And then this gal is a trophy horse. She's labeled on her belly, um, one of a kind, 2008, I think. What does that say? 2009. I won her at a model horse show over in California. So she is a one of a kind trophy horse, but I've never like looked up to see if like who she's by or anything like that. Another design of horse. Yeah, I like them. What can I say? Bald face, um, lavender, high socks, low socks with the really pretty fun split tail in the back and then no main wisp on this side. So um, I picked her markings exactly and then this one i have no idea what she is but she's really cool i love the metallics this is she's kind of a blue green solid metallic she has the regular straight down mane with the main wisp on this side and straight tail but she's really pretty she has no markings i didn't bother to look her up but she's fun so um we've reached the end of my reach for this shelf so see you next week and we'll move on to the rest of my peter stone horses